Webflow is a low code tool to build websites. The key part about Webflow is you don't actually need to know how to brute force code websites. It really is a drag and drop application. So in this tutorial video, we're gonna go over how to actually build out the structure of a Webflow site. Then we're gonna go into styling, a little bit into animations, and finally go over some direct competitors so you can see which is best for you. So the first thing we need to do is actually pop on the internet and get to Webflow. So I will link my affiliate link below so you can use that to sign up. But essentially you can build up to two websites for free, so I suggest starting with the free plan. So once you get on here, you can go ahead and click view dashboard once you have already signed up and like basically confirmed your email address and all that jazz. And then you can go ahead and set up a template, a free template, or you can actually start from the beginning. I'm gonna show you it from the beginning and we're gonna copy my current ghost theme website because that's a good place to start and to show you some of the features. So when you start from scratch, it's gonna look something like this. So essentially you're gonna have this navigator bar, which is where all the little elements and um, code pieces are going to fit, although we aren't really coding. So essentially what we need to do is build out a layout. So it says add layout. What are you gonna do? You're gonna go over to this left side here and click this add elements button, this plus. We're gonna start here and build out a little bit of the website. So if we take a look at my website, and if you're copying somebody else's, it's very simple. All you have to do is kind of go in here and inspect the code. So if I right click and inspect, you can see all this code here. So I'm gonna reference that throughout because I'm gonna be copying my own website. But I know up here, I basically need a navigator section. So I'm gonna go and add that now. So what you need to do is go ahead and grab this div block, which is basically used for anything. And we're gonna call that, and right here, see how it has a tag? We're gonna go into the selector and call that nav. Um, it's a little bit easier because then you can at least see body and then navigation. So I'm gonna go and add an icon here, but let's just build out the structure first before we add any of the style. So next, let's take a look. We have two columns, it looks like. So here's a column and here's a column. So let's go into the add elements and click the columns. So I'm gonna drag and drop that here. And you can see it's giving you options. I'm gonna do six and six. You can also see all the settings here, but this is good enough for now. You can rename this column one, column two. I mean, that's fine enough for me. Now let's take a look. Looks like we have some blocks down here. So let's add a grid below. So let's go back in here and go into grid, drag and drop that here. Now I do have an extra column, so I need to press the plus button and then right click, delete row, and then you should be done. So now you can see this is kind of what our website set up. Inside the grid, I do want to throw in some div blocks. So I'm going to press plus, throw in a div block into each one, um, just to keep them separate if I wanted to add more things. So now we have the structure. We have the navigation bar, we have column one, column two, then we have these. I'm going to actually name this one productivity and books and YouTube. So we can go here and add books and YouTube. This is just to keep your code simple so you can see, like you can rename these. If you want, don't wanna call this grid, you could call this like button section, button section, whatever you wanna name things. So columns, whatever. So essentially we have our structure. Now we need to add all the extra things. So right now it doesn't look so great, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here and say, okay, I need this guy. What is this? In our code, it says it's a heading one. The H1 is heading one. And then it says this is a heading two and this is a paragraph. So we're gonna add a heading one, heading two, and a paragraph. Super simple, go back to the plus, go into heading. We're gonna drag and drop that into the pro, um, into column one. Now you wanna make sure that you can get it in there. It's really, it's sometimes difficult. Sometimes you can just drag and drop like that. Other times you can use this navigator bar to make sure it goes in the right place. Again, I'm gonna make sure that's a heading one. All settings are over here. We'll play around with that in the styling section. And then we need a heading two. So let's go and grab another heading. Again, it's getting kind of hard to drag that in there. So you can do like this and just make sure it's underneath. I'm gonna call that heading two. Again, settings there. And then I'm gonna go and grab a paragraph. So let's go down here, grab the paragraph, bam. 
we got a paragraph. Um, I can go and grab this from my actual site and copy and paste. And then this was, hey, and then this was, I'm a YouTuber, bam. Okay, this top section had the image, so I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that from my image section. You just upload them here, so you can just grab them off your computer. Um, I'm just gonna grab the PNG, that thing is huge. Let's make that smaller, like 300, great. And let's see, column two, we're gonna actually add a video. So you can grab a direct YouTube link or just grab the video, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna grab the video. I'm gonna grab the link from this, I think it's this guy here. So I'm just gonna grab the YouTube link, throw it in here and press enter and bam. Down here, um, I think we were using headings. Let me see if I can isolate this. Inspect, we're inspecting our code. Okay, that's a heading two and that's a paragraph. So let's go and add a heading two and a paragraph. So again, super simple, drag and drop. Fantastic, we're gonna call that heading two. And then I'm gonna go and grab a paragraph. And this is where it gets kind of tricky, so I like to make sure I get it in the right section under productivity paragraph. And then I'm just gonna go and grab tips for breaking, tips for breaking down goals. And this was productivity, productivity, cool. So now that we have that, um, we have this going on, it looks pretty decent we need to actually start with styling. So it's kind of all jumbled together. It kind of looks like a little bit like trash. I mean, it does, but this is just the structure. You can see it's not that hard to copy this website. Like it, it hasn't been that difficult. It looks pretty similar. Yeah, we don't have the button yet or anything, but I mean, you just play around with the blocks until you can get it semi-close and then we'll go into styling. Okay, so how do we go about styling this? The first thing we're gonna touch is this top piece and how it works is you are in the style section. Okay, so I'm clicking on this image. Um, I don't care about this tag. Go down here and you can start adding padding, padding and margin. That's pretty common, especially when you're coding to add margin or padding. I like to just add padding. So don't worry about the margin for now. Essentially, you can click right here and then drag down in order to move it down. So you see, as I move this up and down, it moves down on the screen. And then I'm gonna add a little bit to the right. So we're gonna drag that in. And then here, make sure to grab the column because that's the padding that you want on the column, not on the actual text, unless you wanna move this separate, but I wanna move them all in unison. So I'm going to move this a little bit and I think it's a little close. So I'm gonna move it down a little bit. This video, make sure you're not clicked on the video. We wanna be on the actual column itself. So if I go to column two and make sure that's selected. If you can't get it selected on here, you can always use this navigator section. And I'm gonna drag this down a little bit. I'm gonna put it like kind of in the middle. I want a little padding on the bottom of it because like, my God, that thing is really close there. And then I want a little bit on the right. So see that? Um, and again, you can play around with this. You can move things around, add padding, change the size, position. You can even change the font and everything. But essentially, that's how you style stuff. You use this style icon and you just make sure you're selected on the individual elements and then move them around. So now you can see this is starting to look pretty dang similar to my actual website here. Like those are starting to look pretty good. Yeah, I need to add some more stuff in the navigation bar and all that. But for the most part, you just play around with it until it looks good. So you can copy someone's website, you can use a template, but that's at least how you customize it. Now there are a lot of other elements that we didn't talk about like buttons, lists, um, labels and stuff. And you can even embed your own code if you have the advanced version, you have to pay extra for that. You can do Twitter, there's all kinds of stuff. So just play around with the elements and stuff because you'll get a hang for what they can and cannot do. Now that we have the basic foundation 
of the actual website. Let's talk a little bit about animations because they are pretty cool. So if we go into the integrations tab over here, or interactions, my bad, interactions tab, kind of by the styling, um, you can go in here and add a page trigger. So when the page loads, you can add an animation. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this page load, and then I'm gonna add an action and start animation, and then press the plus. And we're gonna call this a loading animation. And what you can do is you can add an action. So I'm gonna do an opacity. I'm just gonna have my thing um, or my logo basically um, fade in and, until I see it. So if I press the opacity one, we can see we have the image here. Image, we can rename it, whatever we want. I'm gonna drop the opacity down to zero. See how it's zero? And then I'm gonna right click and duplicate that. And I'm gonna bring the opacity back up. And you can put a duration, so let's just put one, and then you can press play and watch it fade in. So when you open the website, it's gonna do that. So now I press save, and now I have a nice animation. And you can do that for anything. You can play around with the, the automations. I haven't used all of them, but the animations are pretty cool. So you can have things fade, you can have things move, move around. So I haven't played too much with it, but it will bring your website up to the next level, which is, better than my website because I don't have any animations on my basic ghost website. So let's talk competitors. There are other website applications. This is mainly for customizing your website. So the main competitors are gonna be Card and Bubble. Those are both customizable websites. Now, again, I was using Ghost, which is not a super customizable, like unless you're gonna code your own template, you can't, there's no interaction or feature like they have in Webflow. So I feel like if you just want something to start out with, use a template on any one of these website applications. But if you wanna be able to customize it and play around with it, I feel like Webflow is a really good tool to get used to. And you can even like build people's websites for money or it doesn't have to be just your website. It's just a really cool tool where you don't actually have to know how to code. If you're interested in seeing other tutorials of low-code tools, I will link a few of my favorites up here. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.